That's right. Uh. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Storage. I am, of course, Libby Higgins, and today in the podcast studio, we have Harold. Hey, everybody. Harry here. Hope everybody didn't lose any money on the Super Bowl, had a great weekend, and is having a great week here. And if you don't know who Harry is, then I'm going to do what I do with all my guests. The introduction to Harry is Harry introducing himself. Hey. So take it away. And as far as introducing, what do you mean? Just telling them about me? Tell Tell them who you are. Tell them what you're all about. All right. So Harry is, for one, a man. <laughs> Harry's a, a man. young man. And let me stop him. He's a man that speaks in third person about himself. Um. So we love that here at Storage <laughs> Podcast. And Harry is from Chicago, Mexican. Um, also, I am 32 years, 33 now, 33. actually. I'm a Capricorn. Um, <laughs> love music. Love fashion, love good energy, love food, <laughs> love animals. He you, does love animals. You don't have a ah. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else? What else? Um, yeah, pretty simple guy. Well, let's not say simple. Well, <laughs> if we're being honest, <laughs> I get it. I but I'll get back. We'll get back to that. But yeah, other than. Those things that I mentioned, oh, I'm uh, the youngest of three, two older sisters, and I'm the only boy. Okay. Um, I can hear you fine because you have a loud voice. Yes. I just want to make sure that I'll you're in there. Maybe scoot that a little bit to you so I don't have to hurt your back. No, it's okay. I'm all right. Now, I'd like to just circle back to Harry being simple. Okay. And... From what I found in the time that I've known you, you're not simple. Um, okay, maybe to me, but then I, I can I can break that down for you guys if you guys want me to. And I'll just give you a few examples. Just this weekend alone, Harry's been here since Thursday. It is now Monday. Harry has spent a lot of time getting ready and more time than me. I'd say we wasted probably in the whole time two hours. Okay. And as you can see, Harry has a new haircut. So that's one of the things. Before, he had very long hair, which was beautiful. A lot of people are going to be upset that he cut it. Yes, I'm sure. But it grows. You know, I still got a head full of hair, but continue. Um, so he's he wants to get the hair in order. His outfits are on point. Which is funny that we're friends because I'm more of a gal that is, I like to look nice, but I don't really care, honestly, um, because I'm old. I think it's because I'm old. When I was younger, I cared more. Now I'm just like, I don't care. I'm not a fashion yeah. model. I'm not, um, I'm not even an Instagram model. I'm verified on Instagram, but I'm you, not. You, you're a model. Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> so go ahead. Sorry. <clears throat> And um, so I just wanted to circle back on that. So, uh, yeah, she's not lying. It took, it took me a little longer. M- mind you, I woke up later, so I let her take a shower first. My showers are quick. It was just more that when I f- first got to the hotel, I kind of unpacked my stuff. Stuff was kind of everywhere. So I, I had to remember, where did I leave those pants at? Oh, where did I leave that shirt at? So I think that. So it's not like I was standing in front of the mirror for an hour. That's true. <laughs> and also, but also, I apologize too. Also, he's um, underneath his his nice sweatshirt that he bought on sale. Uh huh. Um, he has a nice white t shirt, just a basic white t shirt. Is it Calvin Klein or Walmart? Calvin Klein. Calvin Klein, which you did get on sale, if I remember. Yes, correctly. Black Friday. I went shopping. Loves a sale. So it's very comfortable. Me, when I put a t shirt on, I just place it on my body. Harold had to get the ironing board out <laughs> and the iron to iron a t-shirt. And yes. it blew my mind because this is not something that I do. And I, I give him props because he always does look fresh. 
But I just don't have time for that. Mm-hmm. Okay. We're staying hydrated here. Ladies and gentlemen, we're staying hydrated. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen. We are staying hydrated here at Storage Podcast today. We stopped at Shell and got some beverages. Ladies and gentlemen, we will not get dehydrated. Um, This is what you were doing just sparked something with me. Harry and I are both incredible air drummers. Yes. Harry is a real life drummer. He knows how to drum in real life. Correct? Yes. How did you go about getting into drumming? So, um, I guess I'm musically inclined. My dad is a drummer. I wasn't say it was, but he is a drummer. Um, I grew up in the church, so I was in choir with my sisters, and my sisters both sung. And my dad used to take me with him to the recording studios mm-hmm. when he would record. And I'd be that little kid in the corner at four in the morning sleeping so i think it was just in, in my dna and then plus as a kid my dad would rehearse with his band in our basement so there was always a drum set available what was his band called well he was in a few but um the original or just at the time uh the one where he had a, a very nice mullet which i'm going to show some pictures it of it was your called dad. grupo oasis tropical de chicago let me just go ahead. I'm going to refer so to some you, pictures of why, your dad. While you look for the pictures, yeah, my dad, it's funny because my dad, uh, well, the story I was told is my dad's pretty much one of the youngest, and they bought the drum set for his older brother, and they had it in the attic, which his brother never used. So my dad used it, ended up inheriting the drum set, and he would do gigs at a young age. I think he recorded his first album uh, on vinyl. I think he was maybe 16. So he started very, very young. Shout out to my dad for giving me good genes. Shout good out to DNA. your dad. And I'm going to put some <laughs> pictures up. I'm not going to show them here because I'm going to actually put them over the video. But let's talk about this first picture here. This was your dad in, in the band? Yes. They probably were. It was probably after a set. He's wearing a nice denim denim outfit. And the jeans are ripped, but you can tell underneath the jeans he's wearing some sort of tights. Yes, maybe late, uh, like leggings. Leggings. He has some cowboy boots on. And a fresh mullet. And yes. a fresh mullet. And he looks mullet. exactly like you. Yeah, well, that's, I guess my mom never had to get a, a DNA test. <laughs> now, this next <laughs> picture. Oh, that guy. That's a famous guy on the left. Who is he? That's Johnny Canales. So he had a TV show in Corpus Christi, Selena. If you guys have heard of Selena, rest in peace to her soul. She performed on that show. And what was funny was we would drive there from Chicago. Uh, I think we did it, you know, two road trips. And um, they would lip sync. So they had fake speakers up there that looked with no speakers in it. They had the drum sets, everything, and the the band would be Thanks rocking, dancing, um, <laughs> lip singing. It's hilarious, but great show. Johnny Canales, he was the host of the show. What is your dad holding? A drumstick? Looks like a drumstick. Now it's that is probably one of the fanciest drumsticks I've ever seen. Yes, it looks it's like a blue. wand. Maybe your dad was also a magician. Do we know if? Can oh, we confirm yes. if he was a magician or not? Uh, in his mind, he was. <laughs> And, of course, the th- one thing I noticed in the picture is there's a case of Coca-Cola bottles in the bag. Hey, look how old-timey that is. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly the 80s from the look. Loving your dad. And his mullet. And the last picture I'd like to share is a picture of your dad in front of a tour bus. Yes, that was their tour bus. So they were living. They, was all, they were on the road like you gals and just doing it up. Do you feel like... Um, do you feel like you got your fashion sense from your father? Um, part of it. I got the good looks, that's for sure. Oh, dang. I got the, my dad's very laid back. Funny. He laughs. He's one of those that he'll give you a dad joke and laugh at his own joke harder than anybody else in the room. <laughs> Which is funny and cute. Shout out to my dad. 
I met your dad and your mom this summer, and your dad was really interested in my comedy stuff. So I feel like we connected on an entertainer level. Yes. I think it brought him back, you but know. I didn't tell him any of my jokes, though, because <laughs> I was not looking to get disowned the first time I met your dad. Yeah, I come from a... My family is um, pretty simple, laid back. Um... We have sense of humor, but uh, yeah, if they would have heard some of those jokes, I'm sure they would have laughed, but they probably would have like, okay, They're but like, yeah. Whoa. But yeah, very funny people. Very funny people. I know both of your sisters. They're both funny. Um, one of your sisters, I won't say their names for their privacy, but one of your sisters is more shy and quiet than the other one. The more bold one. Is she the oldest? Yes. Okay, so she's the oldest and she... When we both found out that we had, um, and you probably don't want to hear this, dirty senses of humor, uh -huh. that's when our online friendship went to the next level. <laughs> and she'll send me good stuff. Shout out to sis. Shout out to your sis yeah. and your other sis. Yeah, shout out to both of them. And they look just like him. It's the lips. Somehow in their family. My dad. When God created you guys, they were like, they're getting the lips. And then as they were busy making your family's lips, they skipped over my family's list. <laughs> it went to the next family. Yeah. Um, very, yeah. But one's a little shyer than the other one. But when she's comfortable, like most some people are, and she breaks, you know, feels comfortable, mm -hmm. you get that, that sense of humor. And they're both great. They're both great. Yeah. Your whole family's great. Wonderful people. His mom used to call me Senora. Se senora, which means uh, it's like a. Mm -hmm. Senor, like a respectful way of calling somebody. Like ma'am? Almost, yeah. At first I was kind of like, is she calling me that because I'm clearly older than you? But then I was like, you know, she's just being respectful and nice. And she, I guess the old timey ways of maybe, they probably said senor, senora often, so, you know. She so say, say hi to senora for me. I say shoddy, so. <laughs> to me, it, it uh... It's the same thing, shoddy and senora. Have you ever called your mom shoddy? No. Nah. Would you ever call your mom shoddy? I mean, joking probably. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I would have to. It would have to be a, a certain situation or whatever. But I wonder if my voice sounds a little sick or. It sounds good. Okay. We've been raging. Yeah. Last yesterday we can we uh, finished our song, which we're going to debut here in a little bit. Um, but that's one of the things that. That we connect on is music. Mm-hmm. Because I think I have an ear. I might not be able to always get the stuff on beat, but I have an ear for what's happening in the song. Yes. And I, that's the thing I like about music is if, what do they call it? The universal language. It, um, you don't have to understand it to feel it. Right. So I think that's great. Do you ever cry at songs? You know what? There's been times where I, you know, shed a tear or it puts me in a certain mood, but I might have, you know. I don't think there's one song that you've sent me that I've been like, mm, I don't like that. Okay. Maybe one or two, but most of the songs you send me, I'm like, yeah, I can get jiggy? I can get on board with that. Well, get jiggy. I sent you a few Christian songs a while back, and she doesn't, songs with minor chords, which, again, goes back to music and the feeling, makes her feel sad. Oh, yeah. So any type of song. You with, too. We've listened. Yeah. There was one we listened to. We were both crying. Yeah. Tearing. It just, <laughs> it's, it's corny, but it's, it, it just shows, it just shows that you have feelings, you know? Yes, folks. We have feelings here. Hey folks, ladies and gentlemen, guess what? We both have feelings. Oh, that's what I was going to say. We're both air drummers. Yes. And I, I want to maybe put forth a contest. Okay. And I'm going to turn that song on, and we're both going to air drum. Sure. And then the audience is going to vote for who's their favorite air drummer. Now, I, for the I wish they could see my feet, though. Cause oh, yeah, the feet are important. Sometimes I'll do double bass, and they're both going fast like this. Okay. The problem with this is the people that are listening aren't going to get to see this. So I would encourage them to go ahead and go to YouTube and watch this segment. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not... sure you could probably do a little clip for YouTube. 
I'm going to do this whole video. Okay. But what I'm saying is. I mean, a clip for uh, for Instagram reel. Well, yeah, we could do that. But the people that are listening to this on Spotify, Apple Music, et cetera, are not going to see You're right. what we're doing. But we're going to do it anyway. Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, I give to you. I give to you the world's first storage podcast air drumming contest. Wasn't I wasn't supposed to touch that button. All right, you ready? Got your sticks ready? and I'm dizzy. Whoa! 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 <laughs> you got I, it! So, my, I don't know if this is a drummer thing, but my dad closes his eyes too and licks his lips on him. Mm. Now, my, my big drumming move is the hair. <laughs> yeah, you it's do the, the hair. hair. Because if you're a drummer and you have long hair, you hey, have to. You hurt damn. your neck. I want these poor drummers. <laughs> I haven't snapped my neck that hard. <laughs> And then plus, I don't have my all this hair back here. Right. Which, by the way, my head feels great. I can run my fingers through my hair easier. I have a head full of hair. It's very thick. So after the shower, you would feel that weight. Um, so. You had a lot of hair that would fall out after the shower just because there was a lot. It was in a. Especially when I braided my hair. So when I braided my hair and I took out my hair, I mean, my the braids, I would lose so much hair, like balls. And somehow, some way, I'm blessed I still have my hair. But well, it's, it's beautiful. I like your hair like this. I also liked it long. I, uh, you want to get into the hair thing now or what? The, it sounds like the people next door have decided that they have opened up an axe throwing store right there. <laughs> they have, they're, they're, uh, it's a constru- construction company that's unloading wood into their storage unit. Well, they can unload some wood in here. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Talk about not skipping a beat here, okay, folks. Okay, That folks, was on point. You say wood, I know what to do with it. <laughs> Whoa. Hey, folks, know what to do with wood here. I got two RBIs and getting wood. <laughs> Whoa. They're, they're having, going to town. They're going to town on a Monday afternoon. And usually I don't come in here this early because of this, but from what I have found, you can't hear a lot of the highway noise, but you'll hear that. But that's okay because that's part of the ambiance. Yes. Another part of the ambiance is the temperature in here. And today... It's actually not bad. It's very nice. We yes. don't even have the heater on. I wonder how, it is gonna, how it's going to be in the summertime. In the summer, it's going to be a problem. And you're and not going to be able to play, have a fan in here? It's going to be a problem. You just do a white t-shirt con. I mean, um, white beaters? <laughs> Where? Uh, it's going to be a problem. Yeah. It's going to be... With these walls, we're going to be sizzling in here. Sizzling like a, in a hot sauna, folks. Hey, folks, speaking of hot saunas, Harry and I love to go to hot springs. Yes, hot springs. Best thing ever. Somebody asked us a question. What is one of our favorite trips? Um, and we've, you, Okay, first, let's, how many times would you say you've been to Colorado since? Oh, my God. You, we've met. At least 10? At least 10. I don't even know. I'd have to look at my records of I travel. Think for me, for me, probably one of my favorite trips was when we got an Airbnb in the little cabin. Mm-hmm. Wait, was, the little cabin or the one with the hot tub? The one with the hot tub. Uh, wait. Oh, yeah. Okay. Both of those. Hey, folks. Hey, folks. Lots of noise here. So back to, um, it was probably that one. There's so many. I liked when the girls came out. That was fun because I got to go to visit different parts. You did. You had a show in Denver, and you had a show deeper in the mountains, close to Utah, I believe. It was called. Um, I forgot. Jun- Junction. Junction. Junction City. Junction, Junction City. something. Yeah, like that or something. Um, yeah, that was fun. And back to the hot springs. We have so many here in Colorado. Oh, we have so many in Colorado. Uh, my favorite hot spring is. Iron Mountain Hot Spring. That's 
And is that the one that's outdoors? Yes. Uh, see, I like that. The the ambiance there is nice, and it's very beautiful. However, their hot springs don't get hot enough. Yeah, and good for us. The closest hot spring is about 45 minutes from where I live, about 45 minutes from the airport. This one's an older hot springs, but it has caves, and the caves get, I think, they get like 115 supposedly mm-hmm. they, supposedly the water gets to 120 degrees but it's so hot that they have to cool it down so the water temperature and there's like 110 but it's still hot very good and that is called indian hot springs in indian springs colorado and that one is my favorite however it's not ada compliant meaning if you are in a wheelchair or have mobility issues the only way to get to the caves is via steps because it's such an old place. It's a historical place. They can't, yes. they're not going to put an elevator in there. And everybody's nude. Well, not anymore. Oh, they changed that. They changed it. You can no longer go into the caves nude. So was this just recent that you found out? This was recent. So the have- last time we were there, in fact, remember? Well, okay. So I, I never go nude into the caves, but I've seen men nude. Um, why don't know, but, um, wow, that's, that's actually better for me because there there were a few (laughs) occasions, bad experiences that I had while I was there folks. And, uh, let's just say, uh, there's just certain things you don't do when you have your junk. For instance. Yes. So uh, if you're sitting there with your junk out. So, you know, you walk in, I'm inside, find a seat and you could either be in the hot tub or you could just sit down on a wooden bench there's grown men that are sitting on a wooden bench with their par- private parts hanging out, and they'll just spark a conversation with you, like if they're at Starbucks <laughs> or at... And to me, it doesn't make sense, you know, but... And one time he came out and described an older gentleman was sitting with his legs crossed. Yes. And beneath, <laughs> <laughs> beneath his legs, his part... One of his parts looked like a puffer fish. <laughs> Because it was so squeezed. It was so, he was sitting with his legs crossed <laughs> and just dangling his leg, and it was so compressed. Is that a good word? That it looked like a puffer fish. And if, for those that don't know what a puffer, fi- f- puffer fish is, I suggest you Google a puffer fish. Oh, my God. It didn't look like it was about to pop. Yeah. And it wasn't the... And, and I'm not being vague on purpose. I've been trying to keep... This podcast on the cleaner side. Yes. Um, for YouTube and just because people don't want to be listening to this and hear a bunch of nonsense. But people like to hear that. It's stuff. not it's not the top portion of his it's the bottom part. The bottom part. That carries all your important information. <laughs> AKA can make, you know, kids come from. Children. AKA squeezed puffer fish. Yes. So um so those are that's one occasion. Um, what's another one? Um, yeah, just talking to somebody with your private parts hanging out. (laughs) Another one is in the locker room. Some of these men, you know, hang out and I just, I come back in. Mind you, I don't change in front of the men. I go in a little stall. I change, shower, change. Some of these men hang out in the locker room, laying down, relaxing, putting lotion with their private parts hanging out, still having a conversation. (laughs) And, um, yeah, just to me, it doesn't, uh, eh. You're more of a conservative person. I'm not a conservative, in, but yeah. In in the in the realms of nudity. Yeah, ne- maybe I'm traumatized because uh, um, as a kid, we would go to YMCA and there was always grown men in the showers with their private parts hanging out. Um, I would just try, pr- try to pretend like I didn't see anything. And I don't see why they have to be naked to shower. Like you have your swimming trunks, you're soaping. You could just grab... You know, put your hands underneath your trunk, scrub, and then when the water hits, just let it rinse off, and that's it. So, but whatever. It's different strokes for different folks. Right, right. Um, And usually, the people that seem to be the most naked are the oldest. Yes. And what I've heard about men's junk is that the older you get, the the Saggier? Yeah, saggy. So, I imagine as a kid, you're like, whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Yes. And me, I like to be naked. And um, 
maybe I'm an exhibitionist in that. I'm like, yeah, look at me. You yeah. ever seen a booty this big? No, you haven't, ma'am. Have you had any bad ex- or any funny or bad experiences in uh, in a hot spring? No, I've had all good good experiences. Oh, and uh, back to the hot springs, the Indian one. They have a mud bath that you can um, um, do. I suggest you do it, and it makes your skin feel soft, and I feel like it makes my face glow. Back to me uh, taking care of myself. I just, you know, you only have one face. so Right. Unless you're two-faced. <laughs> <laughs> that was stupid. No, so. No, the, uh, the mud, it's deceiving, though. It's not really a mud bath. You don't get in a bath of mud. They give you these little containers, and then you just spread the mud all over you. And let it dry, and then you wash it off once you're ready to go. And I like that room, but their seating in there is terrible. Again, not yes. compliant for anyone that's um, under 12 pounds. Terrible seats. It's like those beach chairs that if you set your beach towel on in a bag, it's going to crumble underneath you. Yes, yes. Do better, Indian Hot Springs. Do better. I'm sure they've made quite a lot of money to uh, step it up. Step it up. Step it up a notch or two. Maybe I could just take a lawn chair in there with me. Uh, I mean, if you want to carry, you already have a whole lot of ass to carry. I don't know (laughs) if you want to need anything else to carry. (laughs) Um, We love big ass here, folks. (laughs) Hey, folks, good news. Big ass is in style again, and it couldn't be a greater time because my ass... Is huge. We were Doesn't. filming. We were filming the music video for Wada Wada Walk, and I was able to get a good glimpse of myself on camera. Whoa, big butt! Yeah, she wore a pair of leggings that were translucent. They're called TikTok leggings. And let's just say that thing was thangin'. <laughs> That's my term. That thing was thangin'. That thing was thangin'. <laughs> that, it definitely was thangin'. Yeah. And um, we keep getting sidetracked. No, we're not. Which is great. I, this, there's no flow. There's no. It's your uh, show, shoddy. It's my show, and I can do what I wh- want. Want. What if I looked up at you and was like, we haven't been recording this whole time? Then um, I don't know what I would do. Should I check the cameras? Double check? Yeah, let's double check. I see yours is on, but I can't see mine. Am I in there? Yes, you're in there. You're not blocking it. You're fine. Some people have suggested I get monitors for my cameras, which I've thought about, but in order to do that, I have to have Wi-Fi. Probably use your hotspot on your phone. No, but you have, yeah. I have to use my phone. So I was thinking about getting a hotspot, and I was like, you know what? Let me just chill out for a while because I've already bought enough stuff for this podcast. And you're doing good, by the way. Congratulations on your new podcast. Thank you. Um, you're doing great. If you could, if you guys could see this, like, it's awesome. What do you see over in that corner? Luggage. <laughs> That's exactly Rafe. what Rafe saw when he looked over there. Luggage. Oh, don't let me forget to get that gray one because I have brought so many clothes to the hotel, I can no longer fit them in my other <laughs> luggage. Uh, another thing... My sister, my sister has a tendency to overpack. I mean, over, not like overpacking. Overpacking is a bad thing. Libby loves to be prepared. Well, because you just never know. And then again, Libby, uh, when she visits or goes somewhere, she doesn't stay for a day or two. It could be a week, be two weeks. So, well, typically with us, we'll say, okay, we're gonna hang out four days, and then on day four, I'm like, I don't want to go bye bye. And then I'm, oh, so by the way, I'm a truck driver, so it would, we'd kind of plan it to where I know I would look at my schedule ahead of time, and then we would kind of just plan it and figure things out, and then try to stay at a hotel near my job, so I don't have a far commute, but if we, we've, we made it work, folks. We made it work, and we always have extra, I mean, when I stayed there last December, my God, every day for like a week, I'd go down to the hotel lobby and be like, yeah, we want to stay another day. Same thing in Vegas when oh god <laughs> when, when you and when you and the the girls opened up for uh, uh, Whitney, Whitney Cummings, Cummings. we oh, we that was our first long that was our first experience of this happening. So we ended up staying like an extra week, <laughs> and every day we were like, okay, one more day, 
one more day. So I was just using my personal days, sick days, vacation days. And yeah, we stood at the Flamingo Hotel for. Well, first we stayed at the Wynn. Whitney Cummings put us up at the Wynn. And, and then when it was beautiful. time for us to go. Beautiful at the Wynn. We went to the. Flamingo. Flamingo. Hotel. Are you sure it was Flamingo? Yeah, because it had that old timey look. It was old timey. And man, it you could smoke in there and it was stinky and grody. <laughs> Yeah, it was old time. It was great, great time in uh, Vegas. You reminded me of something. I'm looking. Oh, question. Somebody asked us something. So yeah, I answered that <clears throat> question about what's my occupation. So Harry's a truck driver. Also, I was a barber for 15 years. So before moving to Colorado, I worked at a barber shop for 15 years. I started cutting hair, maybe toying with the clippers around 12, 13 myself, my neighbors, my friends, and then I got good enough and started working in my first barbershop when I was 15, 16. I worked through the, bar- at the barbershop through high school, uh, after high school, and then um, just made a way. Had oh, a lot you, of cust- were, you were always hustling. Always hustling. Sold cars. Uh, my dad had a dealership license, so I would save my chips, buy cars at the dealership, sell them. Um, private seller on the street, Craigslist, or, you know, Facebook market. Just always hustling and grinding. So I cut hair for 15 years, and then I wanted to pick up a different trade, and there was an opportunity for me to get my CDL, and I had a job already lined up after that. So I did that, and then now I'm in Colorado truck driving. But, yeah, I was a barber for 15 years, hence why I'm into, like, style and fashion or whatnot. Yes. And didn't you have a hair cutting place in your basement at one point or in your home? Yes. When I was um, maybe, you know, 13, 14, right around there, my mom let me get a room. Excuse me. Thank you, mom. Get a room in my basement. I worked at a flea market, too, for a little bit. So I bought a I bought a bar. Wait a minute. What? So during the time when I was practicing and learning, you know, us Mexicans, we like going to flea markets on the weekends. What did you call it the other day? The Swaparama? The Swaparama. And, um, I didn't know you worked there, though. So what I did was I wanted to get better. I wanted to make money. I had nothing to do on the weekend. So I asked one of the ladies that had a little, that paid for a section, if I could work for her. She tried me out. I would work there on the weekends, and I, she would give me, like, it was like 60, 40. I would get 60. She would get 40. I did that for some time. Then I quit. I bought her, the barber chair. I asked her if I could buy it. She sold it to me for like a hundred bucks and my mom let me use the bar, the room as a barbershop. So I would cut up my friends, my neighbors. I had chairs in there. I had a TV in there. <laughs> like a waiting room. Yeah. I had magazines there. I had, um, you know, my station, like a barbershop mm-hmm. music. And, um, it didn't last too long because my friends would come over. <laughs> I would cut some friends would wait, would, Hey, can you come in here before my hair before school? And I would cut their hair at six in the morning before school my mom was pissed off, so yeah, that didn't, and that didn't last too long. So you were having people come over before school, so you cut their hair before school, after school. Um, wow, you know what I was doing before school? Sleeping. Or we would wake up early and go play football on the playground. I like got six in the morning. Okay. All the kids, but yeah, a lot of stuff, folks. That's uh, I mean, I give it to you. That's working in high school. I worked at Baskin Robbins, but I didn't even want to show up half the time. Yeah, I don't think I would have wanted to show up there either. And then plus for me, it was fun because at the barbershop with the guys and then um, you made me a little more popular, I guess, among amongst my peers. And I was making money. So why not? I could buy all the shoes I wanted to at the time. And um, it was under the table. I'm sure you didn't report this to the... <clears throat> Yes, not reported. You didn't report it to the U.S. government, so expect a call from them. <laughs> and they're going to want back taxes on all those haircuts you did. How much did you charge? Oh, my God. Times have changed. I remember charging $5 in my basement, right? Mm-hmm. And then at the barbershop, standard haircuts were 12 Now you get beard, eyebrows, whatever, could go up to 25 Now, what, when I – well, once I was in my peak of my career, I guess, cutting hair – you know, I was getting fifty bucks a cut. Oh, um, now fifty bucks are standard prices. You want to get your beard, you want to get enhancements, you want a face mask or something. It can go up. 
Did you, did you get tips when you were cutting in high school? Uh, yeah, I got tips, not from my friends probably, but since, you know, I worked at the barbershop, I had a variety of customers of different ages and job careers. So Mm -hmm. I'm sure I got tipped a lot by, you know, men that had, you know, careers. I want to know though, your friends. I want to know if the friends Uh, tipped you as a teenager. (laughs) Excuse me. I have a friend named, I have a friend named Crunchy. Shout out Crunch. He was one of my first, well, my first customer was Peanut. I had a friend named Peanut. But anyways, my friend, he got me once. He's like, hey, I forgot my money in the house. Went in the house, lived right next door to me, and never came back out. I didn't see him for like three days. After you cut his hair? Yeah. Wow. He was a Crunchy. Sc- and was, I've met Crunchy. He was a scammer. <laughs> he still is. No. <laughs> crunchy. But yeah, um, I had another time where a guy never came back. He's like, oh, I'm going to go to my car, get my wallet at the barbershop. Just never came back. You know, there's scammers everywhere. You have to be careful. There was a guy <laughs> that tried to make me feel bad, and I, like, borrowed him some money. I'd borrow him 20 30 here and there. He'd pay me back. And then out of nowhere, one day, he jumped the number. Hey, man, he borrowed me 1000 He was trying Whoa. to trick me. He was trying to, get, like, hey, I'm, I've been paying you back to gain my trust. What do they call those? Narcissists or whatever? He manipulated you, basically. He was trying. <laughs> Did and you then, no, give him a thousand? No, cause he was trying to show his loyalty. Like, oh, bro, I wouldn't do you like that. And, and mind you, I, he was visiting from another state. He was from New York. Um, I wanna, never got me. I want to hear more about Crunchy and why he got the name Crunchy. Crunchy, not sure. Um, by the way, he calls me Hollywood. He said he's all. He says I've always been Hollywood, meaning like cool ass, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know how he got the name Crunchy. Yeah. I'm sure it's not something good. Oh, I don't know. Oh, no with, a, with a nickname like Crunchy, it's it's bad. Like, maybe his drawers is crunchy. <laughs> maybe. His his socks, be <laughs> his toes be crunchy. They, I mean, there's no telling, really. Any other questions? Yeah, we got a bunch of questions in here. Yeah, I don't um, want to lose you folks. Um, can I just say thank you for everybody for, again, for always, you know, being nice to me. And thank you for having me here. Oh, I love it. And you look very, very nice, by the way. I like Thank the green you. sweater. I like the green sweater, too, from Old Navy. We are definitely a, I'd say we're an odd pair. But uh, as Harry always says, People en- love it. energy matches energy. What do you always say? Uh, one plus one equals two. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, by the way, that's our like something we as a joke that we that's have. That's an inside joke we have. One one plus one equals two, bitch. Yeah. Um, what was your question though? I'm sorry. Um, oh yeah, the energy. You, what do you say about energy? Energy matches energy, or energy finds energy? I forgot what I say about energy. But you the, say it all the time. Um, yeah, I, all I gotta say is this: if you energy's there, I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of just, um, it's just there. Right. It just feels good. It feels natural. It doesn't feel forced. Um, and it's good, healthy energy. I think that's good. And I think that's why we get along so well. But we're just having fun, you know? Yeah. We're not... Um... And it's, life is about, yeah, you know, things happen, come up along the way for everybody. And it's just, I think it's just everybody. It's the way you have, it's your outlook on life. Whatever outlook you have. Like for me... Um, I try to turn a bad experience into a learning lesson, which took me a long time to understand, mm-hmm. but or to find. They, they, um, they say there's always a blessing and a a blessing in a bad situation. There could be you got to find the I guess the good in a bad situation right. is what I'm saying. Yeah. I try to do that too. And and if it's out of your control remind you don't blame yourself for it because some of our some of some of i don't i don't want to turn this, the podcast and have it go right <laughs> but if you can't control it don't blame yourself you know well i'm not gonna do that anyway some things yeah are out of our control what are the questions people i mean the mo the biggest question is how did we meet and if you've been here since the beginning you know how it went down uh we met While I was on tour in Chicago, he had no idea what he was getting into, meaning... Had no idea. He didn't know who I was. He didn't know who any of us were. He was basically just um, (sighs) sent my way via Instagram from somebody else that knew us. Yes. So... 
we linked up, and it was, <laughs> first of all, me, I was late, like always. Um, always I, I, late. Should I tell him a little bit? I get to the hotel. I, fi- I finally get there. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on. Meet the girls, not knowing who Chelsea is. I never forget. Shout out Chelsea, always very nice, humble. She or, she door dashed everybody McDonald's. You guys asked me if I wanted some, got some McDonald's. Well, that was the second night I met oh, okay. you. The first night I got you oh. McDonald's. Oh, you got, oh, sorry. Well, thank you, you for were the McDonald's. Hungry. I was hungry. And, always hungry. And I'll never forget what he said because I was eating. He goes, man, you're munching on that McDonald's. <laughs> Not in a bad way. It just he he says it. He yeah. says it a lot. At the time, I was like, "Okay, I'm munching on it." She was hungry. You, I get but, hangry when I'm hungry. We we had some time off in Chicago, so he uh, came back and we hung out three different Occasions. nights. nights yeah. But the first night, um, it was just me and him because that's what was set up. Because Chelsea was at the Playboy Bunny party. And when Chelsea came back, she was, you know, filming us, filming him, getting his reactions, and he was like a deer in the headlights. Yes. So I said, let's go back and look at what Chelsea filmed for her Snapchat. And then that's when he realized. Because <laughs> this was Chelsea's old Instagram. I never that's, forget it. That's when he said, she has a million followers. I'm, I'm, I was sitting next to you on the bed. I was sitting next to her on the bed, and she's like, do you not know who she is? And Chelsea's on her phone, on her bed. I'm like, no. And then I think you showed me, and I said, first thing that came out of my mouth, wow, she has a million followers? <laughs> and then at that point, my head just started going off. But then I was just like, okay, whatever. I still played it cool. And then um, I remember when I first seen your, uh, the set of breasts on both of you guys. I played, like, nothing. Like, I played it cool. And Chelsea's like, man, like, most men get, like, horny over stuff like this, you know? <laughs> she was, there were, these guys were, like, had no no bra on at one point. Not that night. That was another occasion. But um, I think she, at that point, she said, oh, he's a cool guy. Yeah, it, I'll never forget that moment when you were, like, cause, because the, some of the stuff that she had filmed, it was, like, you don't... <laughs> You just don't show up and then somebody's randomly filming. Because we didn't know anything about him. He didn't know anything about us. Yeah. We didn't know if he, this guy was married or. She did ask, can I vlog? She didn't <clears> ask me, but she, I think she might have looked at you. And I think whatever. I didn't think nothing of it. But I'm glad she, <clears throat> she got that because that's, you know. He's thinking, he, he's thinking four out. people on Snapchat were going to see it. And really, it was a lot of people. And if you missed all that, I'm sorry because. All that was ridiculous. Yeah, they had funny. two hotel rooms that were connected with a door. So Beth, um, Maggie. Maggie, they're coming in and out. Fun. And then I went back two more occasions. And after that, we're, we're here still hanging out talking. Well, somebody asked, did you, um, did we think we would still uh, keep in contact after that weekend? I didn't think, I had intentions to. But I didn't know how long we would have, you know, communicated for it. What about for you? I didn't think so. Okay. Her intentions were to, bye. <laughs> I, di- I honestly didn't think. I think I probably, I, I, I want to uh, say I'm guilty. I'm, I think I'm the one that was probably reaching out to you. Yes. Afterwards. So you're probably like, ugh, I can't get rid of this guy. <laughs> I remember, I remember, um, I won't get into that, but, um, it's a what? What I was going to say. Oh. Don't know, folks. I was just going to, it was something funny. Like, uh, you were, we were talking on the phone, or, and Chelsea texted me, and she's like, what are you doing? I was like, telling her that I talked to you. And she's like, you're still talking to that dude? Yeah. <clears throat> Which is hysterical. And um, I, don't rem- I don't remember what, where we, s- I got it. Don't move, don't move. Hold on. You going to get it? My sign just fell down, everybody. Oh, no. You really just got to... Uh, it's just the tape. You just got to... Right he's just fixing that for me. And he said he would fix the light bulb for me. And guess what? I forgot a light bulb. Just tape it wherever you can get it. So, yeah, did not intend to talk to this guy after I left. Not because um, 
I didn't like them or whatever, but it's just like you got so much going on. That was the part of my life where I had just started to talk to men again. I didn't want and anything to do with men before that. That was the 10, 10 year long. I don't want anything to do with men. I don't trust them. I don't like them. I don't care about what they're doing. And I'm sure there's a lot of women that can relate to that. That you know, that can relate to. I mean, I can I can find women relating to that for maybe like a year or two years, but not a, a ten year hiatus. So. So yeah, that's how we <clears> met, <throat> and then um, where we hung out next. I'm not sure, but if I don't. I think what's wrong. I don't know if you wanted to ask another question. That's a. No. Okay. Don't rush me. I'm not. I'm this sorry. guy, when we do mukbangs, he is uncomfortable with a pause or a silence. Okay. So, so I've had to teach him. I have ADHD. So he we'll, does get, have we'll ADHD. get to that, but let's finish if you want. He, he is, he's always looking for the next thing. Um, so we can just go slow. We don't have to rush. Yeah. Um, everything's fine. Everything's and if we great. don't say anything for. 12 seconds, it's okay. That's okay, folks. Now, will it be okay for that one commenter who said, ah, your pauses don't translate well? It's not going to be okay for them, but. It's okay. We're trying to make it work. Okay, folks? Sorry. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that you did do in Chicago is you wrote, where are you going? <clears throat> You're making me paranoid. One of the things that you did do in Chicago before coming up to meet us was you wrote your name in the dirt on our oh, yeah, RV. The dust. Yes. And I never got to see that. Yeah. So when I, in the, the hotel that they, uh, the parking lot of the hotel, there was a section for, I guess, bigger vehicles and their tour bus or RV was parked there and I kind of put one two together. I think I might have looked at the license plates because I think you mentioned that they're from San Diego. California. Yeah. California. So then I um I went <laughs> I climbed on it and on the dirty windshield on the back I put something. I don't know what I put. I don't remember my maybe my name. I think it was your name. Which is Harry. Well people know Harry's not your real name. It's not my name. We could get into that now, later, whatever. We'll just briefly say it's just uh, my thing since how the we the way we met and I knew that they were celebrities. You guys are celebrities that celebrities. I didn't you know, everybody has a personal life. I have nothing to hide because I'm transparent with you guys. You guys they know my I mean she knows my family. Um I mean, they know everything, but for certain people out there, you know, some people, I didn't want my information to be out there and then somebody with bad intentions try to, you know, I don't know. And then also for privacy for my family, family, yeah. Um, not to say <clears throat> I won't reveal it cause I don't mind, but, um, we'll just see what happens. Well, people, some people know, and some people don't know that Libby Higgins is not my real name. Mm. That was a name I chose to use online. I mean, I've always gone by Libby, but Higgins is not my legal name. And I chose that when I was teaching school mm. so that the parents or whatever would not see that I was doing whatever I was doing online. Okay. But, that um, makes sense. Yeah. Tina actually came up with his name. Harry. Shout Harry. out to Tina D-Ball. <laughs> Shout out to the Chiefs that won the Super Bowl last night. She picked it because... Um, they, she just, had, just for that reason, just to sort of protect, not even protect him, protect more of his family, because his family is so sweet and nice, and people are weird on the internet. People will dig and and find stuff. It's like they didn't, they don't know what's going on. They yeah. don't want to deal with this. And plus, my parents know. They, my mom loves watching my my uh, my mukbangs or food reviews. My sisters know. My nephews call me Harry. <laughs> uh, my brother in laws call me Harry. My sisters communicate with Libby, so it's not like it's not, there's there's it's all truth. It's just I'm just protecting myself and my family, right? So. And that's fine. And if I decide to reveal it later, then I do. But uh, for right now, I think we're good. I it's, don't know if I'll ever re reveal my real name. I thought they knew. No, people don't know my real name. Wow, I'm surprised I never <clears throat> mentioned it. An accident. I, good to know. I just don't want people going onto the internet and typing in my name and seeing that I have um, speeding tickets. Oh, oh. <laughs> speaking of, she got two in Colorado. She got two red light tickets, and they're hilarious because you clearly 
can see that it's her <laughs> driving the vehicle. They put so in this one. There's one in, one or two intersections in Colorado where it is you can't even make a red, uh, right on red, and the pictures that they have of me, <laughs> they're hilarious. I am looking like a soccer mom on her way to pick up her kids. Yeah, at soccer, just focused, focus, sunglasses on, just driving. So I have donated a few, uh, probably hundred and fifty dollars, maybe. Yeah. To Colorado, so you're welcome for that, Colorado. You're um, welcome. Like they're not getting enough money through their weed taxes. Yes, a lot of money in Colorado, folks. A lot of money in Colorado. And you moved there how many years ago? Three. Three. I moved there, um, so I have no children. Um, not married. So I've always wanted to live somewhere else. I was going to move to California at one point, San, either L.A. or San Diego. A friend of mine from high school lives in San Diego, also a barber. Shout out to him. Um, but um, I don't know where I – oh, I had also a friend in Denver, and one day I visited, and I said, you know what, I'll just try it here. She got me a job at the, um, where she worked at, uh, UPS as a truck driver, and – yeah, I just ended up, I, I told myself, if it didn't work out, I would move back to Chicago or California, and if not, I'd stay there. And I've been there three years now. I love it. I do visit Chicago often. I see my family, and um, yeah. I had no interest in Colorado before meeting you, but now I just, I love Denver. I love that you can just drive anywhere, and there's mountains sitting right there. Okay. I love what, that. What about the weather? Four seasons, you could get four seasons all four seasons I mean, in one, I think. I can do season. without winter anywhere. I don't care where I am, but, I mean, it's always nice there. Yeah, the one thing about Denver, which I like, since we're a mile, the Mile High City, it could be snow outside, but it's sunny. Mm -hmm. Chicago is very gloomy. I don't know if St. Louis is as much. It can be in the winter. And that's the thing. My grandfather hated being in Chicago in the winter, so... He would go to Mexico. He and my grandfather had, you know, land in Mexico. So he would go to Mexico. My mom's tired of the winters in Chicago. They're depressing. It makes you not want to be, you know. It's dark. It's dark. It makes you not really want to do much. But you got to, you know, my mom ain't raised no bitch. You got to, <laughs> even if it's raining outside, you got to do what you got to do. So, um, yeah, but it's very gloomy in Chicago, Colorado, very sunny. And I love it's it. It's beautiful. Yes. And the um, the crows love Libby, apparently. They do. <laughs> I have a bunch of crows by the house. Big crows, too. And um, apparently when Libby comes to visit, there's more than usual. And they're just a squawking. <laughs> yeah. Um, That makes me think of another question. Yeah, keep going. Somebody said, why do you guys always stay in hotels? And I can start off by answering. First of all, who doesn't like a hotel? Yes. Fresh towels. Fresh towels. Elevators. Somebody to clean. Free coffee. Well, the reason is, first of all, Harry, uh, living arrangements, he has a nice little place that he shares with some people, but his room is small. Yeah, I have two roommates, <clears throat> um, and yeah. And I like to walk around the house. Naked. Uh, naked. Yeah. And that's not possible at his place. Yes. So we just get hotels, and if he's with me, uh, my home here in Nashville, my room is very small, and I don't like to inconvenience. I never know what's going on with Chelsea, Beth. I don't want to inconvenience them, so let's just get a hotel. It's easier. That way we're central to where we're going. Sometimes Harry likes to do uh, acrobatic flips on beds, and I don't want him doing that on my bed, so he can do that in the hotel. <laughs> and then plus Annie hisses at me every time she sees me, <laughs> so I don't want to inconvenience Annie. Shout out to Annie. Shout out to Annie. Oh, uh, uh, and I was gonna get. Um, I was. I'm bad with with um, with timing. I was gonna get a, a merch shirt made for myself. I wish I would have got one made, but it's okay. Maybe the next time I'm on a podcast, I'll have it made. What's it gonna look like? I don't know. I'm thinking about um, a silhouette of like a cartoony of, uh, silhouette of me. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll see. And then it probably says Harry here or. Hey, shoddy. Hey, sh well, he, you were talking at one point about getting one that had just like your side profile with your hair, but now you don't have the hair. But yeah, but I think everybody likes the long hair. By the way, um, what do you prefer? The long hair, this hair is, do you like it both? 
both styles. I mean, um, I honestly like it, but I want to hear what their opinion, their honest opinion. Well, I know I look different. You look different. You look, I think you look younger. I think it makes you look fresher, this mm -hmm. haircut. Of course, the long hair is beautiful. Who doesn't like long hair? But this, I feel like, is um, just lighter and fresher for you. Yeah. And then plus, I my hair got really, it looked like a bird's nest, a rat's nest. How did it get like that? So I would wear my man bun at work. And then, where that work? Yeah, I'm sorry. Scoot up a little bit. I would wear my man bun at work, because when I drive, I lower the window. I don't like my hair blowing in my face. And um, I developed when I would get home from work, I'd take off my hair. My Wait, hair. you take off your hair? <laughs> <laughs> I'd take off my man bun, take a shower, but I wouldn't really. I would brush my hair after the shower, but not all the way through. Halfway down, mind you. I had just drove probably 10 hours, and I, who knows what time it was. So I would go to sleep, wake up, do my thing, go, later on go to work, wrap it back up. And I think I might, have, I might have did that for a few days, and it just got worse and worse. And then I was like, oh, I kept washing my hair, just kept washing the knots, but I wouldn't try to. And then three, week, three weeks went by. I tried coconut oil. I tried teasing it. I tried a bunch of conditioner. Couldn't get it. And then I said, you know what? This is too much. I could feel it yanking my hair from the front from how heavy it was. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, you got to go. So shame on and, me for that. And even at one point, I said, just leave it and then I'll help you when you get here. So then like another wink went by and it was just two big yeah. rat's nests. And I still have them, but why I saved them, don't know. <laughs> But, um, but, yeah, that's what happened. And it's crazy because I've had my hair for so long. I've had people back home that have told me, like, don't cut it. That's that's you. That's your look. You, you can pull it off. I met somebody here in Colorado that's probably known me for two weeks at work that just started working. He's like, man, you shouldn't have cut it off. Like, that 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 look was you. It doesn't bother my, my – uh, it doesn't make me feel bad. But what I'm getting at is a lot of people were just like, that's that's your look. Well, it's it was a look. But sometimes people's looks change. And then plus, um, if I was stuff about storage that I was, like, keeping, that was one thing that was dreading me for years because my grandmother had cancer, and I would take her to chemotherapy, to her sessions, and she shaved, they shaved their head. I remember I did it, and, like, you know, I'd always go with her, but I didn't cut my hair out of support. I was going to. You know, my mom's like, they should, my mom's like, you should cut your hair and they could make a wig out of it for her. But she, her fighting her cancer didn't last too long. So she went and it was just something for years. I didn't think I would ever cut it, but I've been saying I'd cut it off and never would. I know my mom loves it. My mom's been asking me for so long. Um, and I feel better. Will I let it grow back? Probably. <laughs> I'm just letting it, I'm just going to let it, you know, let it flow and see what happens. Mm -hmm. I like it. Or cut it all off and go with a nice tight skin fade. <laughs> you'd look, you look <laughs> good any hairstyle. Thank Honestly, you. I love it. I think it would look really cute with real short sides and then just like a pompadour kind of up here. Yeah. We'll see. Since it's just so dark and thick that it just. Anything you do to it looks... We'll see what happens. So when uh, when I go to Chicago, maybe not this time around, but I have so many friends that are barbers or barbershop owners that if... Excuse me. If I want to, go ahead and do that. When I go back, I'll, I'll hit one of them up for a, for a haircut appointment. But... I want you to scoot that a little bit close to you because every time you back up, I don't... I lose you. I don't want it to fall, though. Yes, folks. Oh, I know how to beatbox too. You do? Yeah. Let's hear it. Wait, can you beatbox to beatbox to this? I don't know. Whoa. You didn't ever go wiki wiki, which what is what I would have expected. <laughs> Yes. I'm going to put on my glasses, Barbara. Let's see what other questions we have here. Do you um, do you fold your toilet paper or do you wad it up? I'll fold it. 
Um, I think I, yeah. I mean, do you wrap it around your hand or do you fold it up? You know what? I guess it depends. (laughs) Sometimes I go. (laughs) Sometimes I just take a couple strips at a time and then I, I tend to put toilet paper in my pockets. Uh, Let's not go there. So I do is I'll I'll prep. So I'll I'll pull, cut, pull, cut, pull, cut, whatever, of how many I think I'm going to need. Oh, wow. That's a lot of prepping. So that I don't have to continue. So then, and then if I need an extra, you know, boom, whatever. I got my, I got my uh, wet toilet wipes too. Mm-hmm. Got to stay prepared, folks. Dude wipes. <laughs> Not sponsored by dude wipes, but you know, dude wipes. Oh, I thought you said doo doo wipes. No, dude wipes. <laughs> That's what they're called, right? The wipes? Dude wipes. The fact that you are, you prepare the amount that you think you're going to need is hilarious to me. Yeah. Because what I do is I stand up and I just start grabbing and I don't fold. I'm a, I'm a wad gal. A wad gal. Gal. Because there's so much ass that it's nearly impossible to do it while sitting. You got to squat a little bit, like arch it. I got to pop it. You got to pop it. I got to pop it out. You got to (laughs) spread. Whoa. But hey, you got to do whatever you got to do to get it, you know, to where you want it to be. Because if not, somebody's going to have a waxy booty. Stop. I call it tangy. Anyways. (laughs) He always says he has a waxy booty. I don't say that. (laughs) All right. Keep it laughing. Keep laughing. Next question. Um, What are some of your favorite nicknames? Also, don't say next question. I'm sorry. (laughs) What are some of your favorite nicknames for each other? So we developed something where she calls me Mr. Hey, Mr. Hey, Mr. Hey, Mr. <laughs> so I'll say, hey, Mr. What are you doing, Mr. <laughs> hey. Or um, I'll talk, you know, she, Mr. Um, shoddy. You always call uh, me shoddy. Shoddy. Or I'll say, um, um, that's basically up? it. Just Mr. Sh- and Shorty. Shoddy. Hey, shouty, mister. 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 Uh, and I have him saved in my phone as mister with a little chef. I don't know how that came out. It just it just started happening, and then we both kind of went back and forth, and it's just now, like, um, just kind of natural, I guess. Mister. Um, yeah, shouty. Not about his shouty, but yeah, shouty. <laughs> um, yeah, I have him saved in my phone as mister with a picture of a chef, and it when the Bluetooth reads it, it says... Mr. Medium Skin Toned Chef. I am medium. I wouldn't want to say I'm brown. I'm, I'm, I'm olive color. But yeah, medium skin tone is probably about right. It was the closest chef. In the summertime here. in Mexico, in the sun, I get dark. Speaking of Mexico, we are heading to Mexico. Yes. Is it next week? Um, two weeks. A week That's if he gets his passport. If not, I'm going alone. Yeah, um, I have an appointment. I got I paid for my passport, but I have to get it expedited. They told me they'll print it out the same day. I just got to pay the fee, so I have an appointment. So yeah, and looking he, forward to Mexico. He Look- he got all his stuff late. Like I, as soon as I knew I was going, I bought my ticket. He got his ticket maybe. What, yeah, like because two I had a co- I had to uh, I had to talk to work, get the days you know uh, okayed. Then I had to look for flights. And um, yeah, and then he's going, man, these flights are expensive. Yeah, you waited till three yeah. days before the. And I've been having mine. Yeah, so I waited a little too long. I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> um, hopefully, I get to go and get my passport. Go snorkeling. Saint ya. Uh, That's what I'm gonna say on the plane. Saint ya. Saint ya. We're gonna go hopefully snorkeling. Uh huh. We have to make a, another video for me. Mm hmm. We have to eat good food. Yes. We have to go swimming. Mukbang. And those are the only things that we have to do. Otherwise, we're doing whatever. Yeah. And we'll have a vehicle. Excuse me. Not sure. I don't think we'll go too, like, out in the outskirts of Puerto Vallarta. But, I mean, maybe if we, we will. Maybe we will. Um, I don't know how the water is in Puerto Vallarta, but I know there's, an um, like, a little island off of the beach, I think. That has clear water, really clear water, and, like, corals, fish, and stuff. So, hopefully we get to go there, see some really blue water. Can't wait. Um, I'm most excited about just being on the beach. I love the beach. And the weather. And the weather. I don't know how warm it's going to be, though. 
Yeah, because that's what I'm scared about. Which I think it'll still be fine. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward. To, my parents are going. So initially, my my mom and my dad like to you know go to Mexico, and uh, she's like, "Oh, mijo, we're vamos a ir a este puerto Vallarta. Si quieres, um, bueno, si me platico, I'm why am I talking Spanish? So she told me <laughs> they were going to Puerto Vallarta, and I'm like, "Oh man, that'd be cool to go and meet you out there." She's like, "Oh, cool. Like, look into it. I looked into it. Now we're going. Now we're going, and I don't know why, but I feel nervous about this trip. Why? Maybe because I'm arriving." separately like i i always travel alone anyway mm-hmm. but it's a different country so i'm a little bit nervous about arriving separately i'm always um, a boss ass bitch though i always do what i need to do no matter where i go but yeah, it's a different country yeah and then i have the layover flight or transfer but it's uh, regardless nonetheless looking forward to to it hanging out with libby making some content probably you're gonna probably gonna take a million Okay, do we have a ghost in here? I think okay. we should just leave it for the rest of it. Yeah, we'll just, if you want. Or if you want to get it. Give me one. God, that one knocked over a oh. lot of stuff. If you're not watching, my storage sign again. Okay, he's flexing in the camera. What you getting? I don't know. Grab me some tape. You want to play the... Uh... I have some different tape over here. So, guys, I said I wasn't going to say so anymore, but here I am. Um, As far as Mexico goes, I'm going to need him to take no less than 3,000 beautiful pictures of me in Mexico. And he's good at taking pictures. He's good at taking pictures. Should I play our song? I'm going to wait till you sit down to play. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to. I'm gonna uh, 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 talk about the song. So, Waddle, when I walked, when that I played, it, uh, what was it last episode or the one before? It's the hit song that I thought of because I waddle when I walk, and I want to normalize waddling because there are there are a lot of women that looks good. Thank you. There's a lot of women that waddle when they walk, and I said to Harold, "Hey, would you make a beat for me?" Because he makes beats. And he did, and then I, we started to work. Now I had a lot of trouble. How long did it take me? How long did the beat take you? Oh, it was fast. It didn't take you that long to make it. Whoa! Hey, folks, knocking shit over. Um, I had a lot of trouble with the lyrics, co. So I'm gonna be honest. Harry wrote a lot of the lyrics. I was having a lot of problems with it. Anyway, it it worked out. It's done. It's been submitted to Spotify, Apple Music, pretty much anywhere that you can get music. Yes, we're, folks. We're pretty satisfied with it. We feel like it's... I had fun making the beat. Made the beat on Fruity Loops, which is a uh, beat-making program. I've been making beats for about 10 years. More like a hobby. And uh, we talked about it, made it happen, and you're going to hear it. <clears throat> Music video coming soon. How many times do you think we've listened to it since we put it? <sighs> I don't know. Put at, it least, at least 100. 100. So here it is. Waddle, when I walk, featuring Harry. Harry made the beat.
thing, that thing so dangerous. Waddle, 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 waddle. Hey, Shorty, how you do waddle, that thing, waddle, that thing waddle, so dangerous. Waddle, 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 waddle. Hey, Shorty, how you do that thing, that thing so dangerous. Yeah. Whoa. Can I get an applause, folks? <laughs> Whoops. It's a banger. It's a banger. It was fun making it and uh, writing with you. The So I'm going to say the lyrics in, in case they're hard to say. Um, every time I'm walking, I see them lurking. Meaning people looking and watching. Mostly men. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a clap. Mostly men. And then I say, if legs could talk, you would hear them hurting. Ooh, them things hurting. Them things be hurting. So then we move on to the next verse. Walking on the stage just to get paid. Got these men spurting. Got these men spurting. So, so how this worked out, I was like, okay, I got to come up with a word that rhymes with hurting. So she loves Google searching. So she looked up the words and she brought up the word spurt. And I'm like, what does that mean? And then you mentioned it, which means like you got them going. You got them going. Going. They're okay. spurting. And then what do you say after that? Um, sitting on his face. Better say grace. Got a bitch squirting. <laughs> Run that back. Okay. One more time. You want me to play the song again? Sitting on his face. Better, better say, say grace. grace. Got a bitch squirting. Squirting, right. We don't have to explain that one. And then we, of course, have the, hey, shorty, how you do that thing? Yes. Hey, shorty, how you do that thing? That thing's so dangerous. Ooh. <laughs> so, yeah, we use auto-tune. So, um, <clears throat> I say that, and I'm, like, pretty much, like, hey, shorty, how you do that? Like, while she walking and I'm waddling. Gonna, I'm going to play my, my favorite part um, because it's a part that makes my soul so happy. I think this is the part you like too. I wonder if gosh, I wonder if it. if your fans would uh would like to, for you to make that your entrance song uh, for your bottle, bottle. We were thinking about it for when you perform. So dangerous. Bottle, 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 bottle. Hey, Shirley, how you do bottle, that thing? Bottle, that thing so dangerous. Bottle, bottle, bottle. Dang, that thing so dangerous. Yeah. Yeah, if you, if, they, if you walked out on stage to that, I think it would be a hit. I, I, I'm I going to do it. And then you got the people. <clears throat> and I'm waddle, waddling. Waddle. Yeah. Sorry, I get excited, folks. The video. Oh, no. I love that you're excited. <laughs> the video will feature you and Brett Boonefficial. <laughs> Brett, Brett Boonefficial. Shout out to Brett. Good sport. Thank you for letting me borrow one of your fanny packs. Had a great time. It was great. Yes. I don't know when that's going to be done, but it's probably this this week. Well, I gotta I edit this. I gotta mm. do drive to St. Louis, do Slap City. Okay. My sister's coming in town. I mean, I got a lot to do. Yes. And then we have Puerto Vallarta. E. What is your opinion on me when I say things like, um, "I'm thinking of having something nice tonight, like a torta." So what do you think about the inflection on the accent? A torta. I, I, I spoke about this last week, how some people get irritated when white people will say. Yeah, they enhance it to yeah. try to. Okay. So there's, I've heard jokes about that before. I don't, they don't bother me. Like, I think it's funny. It's cool. Um, but yeah, but it doesn't bother me. I mentioned the reason I do it is out of respect. So if I'm at a place and Una I'm torta. ordering something and I'm going to order a torta, um, I'm not going to say, can I please have a torta? I'm being respectful of the language and think, the people. Do you want to explain what a torta is? For those a that torta made, is a sandwich, basically. Basically, it's 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 on, yeah, it's pretty much a sandwich, two pieces of bread. God, it's, 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 pretty much, it's pretty much a burrito, but instead of it being in a tortilla, it's inside two pieces of bread. Like uh, and and I love it. I love it. 
Um, they asked earlier some. I seen a question. Somebody asked, uh, "What's like my favorite um, all time cooked meal?" Mm-hmm. For me, I think if it's like a a meal, it probably a skirt steak with um, rice and beans, some sautéed like grilled onions, some sautéed peppers, mm-hmm. some tortillas, some guacamole. Uh, Are you a corn tortilla guy or a flour tortilla? Corn. Um, that's something I could eat probably, you know. Would forever. you say you could eat a Toto Slos Diaz? To- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could eat that all the time. Um, yeah, cause I grew up eating Mexican food. So, Are you Mexican? Yes. Me- I grew up eating Mexican food, and I grew up eating pizza a lot. <laughs> Shout out to my dad. If... This is not sponsored by Giordano's Pizza, but if in Chicago you want an authentic pizza, Giordano's. What other questions? Giordano's. Yeah, don't say it. <laughs> Sorry. Why don't you tell us a little bit about... Um... Okay, so my ADHD, <laughs> uh, I got diagnosed at a young age about the ADHD. Not sure. Like, I mean, they pretty much described what kids do. You just fidgety, you can't stay focused, you get distracted easily. So this is kids. I think this is a way for them to medicate kids. So they That's me, what people say. That's what people say. So I, I think I tried Ritalin and something else called Concentra. My mom put me on. It made me nauseous. They didn't make me hungry. So I went, like, on some type of natural supplement. And then, um, you know, grew up, didn't take the meds. Then as an adult, once, I was like, you know what, let me go see if I still have it. I went and talked to a specialist and like, oh, you still, you still got it, apparently. <laughs> Never went through with this, take meds. And then re- most recent, I seen a psychiatrist. I knew what he was going to do. Because, you know, it's a psychiatrist. And he's like, uh, we talked and he's like, man, I recommend, you know, try Adderall. So I've been, you know, t- trying my ad- taking Adderall for the last, what, mo- like month? And you feel it's helped you? Um, I feel like I don't like to be dependent on... Well, nobody wants to be dependent on anything, but I think it does. Just, um, yeah, it's just it's a what kind of drug? What, what kind of uh, drug is that? Adderall. It's a. Um, it's a s- speed, isn't it? Pretty much. So that's the thing that kind of scared me about it. But then, talking to the doctor, he mentioned that since I have ADHD, it won't affect me like it would affect somebody else that mm-hmm. doesn't have it. That maybe if they took it. It'd be like this. Right. But since I have ADHD. It Why are helps. you putting it in quotes? Because it's not like they withdrew my blood. and they They're have... not going to find that out from your blood. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. So this That's is just... the thing with with mental health disorders. You can't get a blood test and find out what exactly. it is. Exactly. So that's why I go like this because it's. Well, I worked with kids for many years and saw a lot of ADHD. And I knew as soon as I met you that you had it. Um, you said I, I'm probably one of the worst <laughs> cases that you've. He's 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 very. Uh, you and my sister. My sister also has it. Shout out to sis. You're um, you interrupt people when they talk. Yeah. And and I'm not saying these things to make you feel bad. No. I'm just saying them that these are things that are typical. Um, you it's hard for you to focus, and then once you get on something, then you want to jump to another thing. And then that I see you shut down sometimes because you're like I can't do all these things I need. It's to like do. your brain. It's like you have a laptop with all these programs open and your computer starts lagging, buffering. That's your brain shutting down. And then you're just shutting the computer because you're like I can't fuck this. And then you got to deal with it eventually. Right. So uh, that's why they postpone a lot. We we post postpone a lot of projects. Do not finish pro- projects. I've been doing better at it. I like to. I think ADHD and anxiety go hand in hand because. The ADHD might overwhelm you, then it causes you to have anxiety. Um, I feel the good thing about me is that I can notice it and I see it. Mm-hmm. I like to diagnose myself mentally okay. And I know one thing that helps me is to, which I think helps everybody, is to or- organize myself. My room's too clean. I mean, too, too messy. Now, like if it's too messy or I'm not keeping up with short term goals. It'll raise my anxiety because I'm like, fuck, fuck, I'm behind, I'm behind. So even just making my bed, like, I have to make my bed. You know, if I come home to my bed not made, it just gives me, like, anxiety. And I didn't make my bed before I met you. 
but you, you, um, I think I started doing it. Maybe you were like, you should make your bed. And it really has helped me get ready. Like my mom, to reset. Helped, my mom helped me with all that because she noticed at a young age that she needed to, you know, be to help me. Cause I didn't know. So one thing she had found out is even just turning your room around, moving your bed from one side to the other side, getting new bed sheets, mm-hmm. pay, changing the color in your room, even just a change is good. That's one thing. And another thing that she helped me with was, um, what was, what was it? I lost the second one. R- writing stuff down. Oh, organizing myself, you know, short term goals. Don't stress yourself. Don't knock yourself. Like don't beat yourself up. You know, and um, my mom also told me not too long ago that I also taught her, I taught her how to have patience because with me, she needed patience. <laughs> so she thanks me and it's cute. She thanks me for being, she always reminds me like, I love you for who you are, how you are. You're a great person. And I think at the end of the day, it doesn't, as long as you mean well, yeah, you know, you got to deal with your stuff on your own, but um, I don't think it's, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to have had my mom help me you know i'm pretty sure i stressed her out as a young age i used to call her at work um i remember one time my uh my uh there was a field trip at school and i was always jealous that my you know certain friends at school had their parents with them like what they call it, chaperone day mm-hmm. or whatever as a chaperone right and i my mom asked my mom once uh mom um can you come with me on a field trip she said she couldn't because she had to work. So I called her job, asked to speak. I was, mind you, like, who knows, like 10. Asked to speak to the supervisor, told her. And next thing you know, my mom got the day off and went with me. That's called taking action. And then I also called my mom once. She was at the gym and asked the, re- I, the reception answered. I told her my, I told her who I was looking for. And she, she said uh, my mom's name over the intercom. Your son... <laughs> Is looking for you, and my mom was so embarrassed. And I, how I found the number, I, I, I uh, we had yellow pages back then, mm-hmm. so you know I figured it out. <laughs> Where there's a way, there's a will, folks. So yeah, I thank my mom That's for her cute. patience, and yeah, um, I've noticed, and it's it might not even be attributed to you taking Adderall, but I've noticed you have been more organized lately, and it's hard for me to see because we do we don't live in the same. City, but I know that he's got a little calendar. He's marking stuff off. He's, yeah. If he's trying to do a project, he'll do it more. So I've noticed lately it's been better. And even little things that even the house has say phone, keys, wallet. <laughs> phone, phone, keys, keys wallet, wallet, AirPods. Phone, keys, wallet, yeah. AirPods. Yeah. To make sure. And then, yeah, because that's something I had to develop. Again, my mom, say, yeah, boom, boom, boom. Those are the necessities you, well, I need. I think a lot of people relate. And, um, and I feel bad because I know when we leave somewhere, he's going to have to go back in and get something. And today I said, don't shut the door because we only had the one hotel key. So I was like, don't shut the door until you know. And, of course, I forgot. Uh, he forgot something. And then I, I was like, something. man, I'm an asshole. It's okay. Um, Somebody had mentioned, like, uh, um, I forget what it was, but it was a question like, you always seem so happy. and Okay, so... Um, I, I want to address that because, you know, just from stuff online, people can always look happy. Of course, I don't show everything. You don't show everything. But I think people would like to hear that. You're, I think I. OK, for me, I, I want to say I'm an optimistic person. Right. Um, never really seen my mom weak or in a vulnerable state. Or, or uh, my grandfather also is very strong. Not to say I'm compared compared to them, but. I think one leaving my my comfort my comfort zone and moving to another state. Yeah, you can. I was I had um, maybe um, I was homesick a couple of times. I noticed uh, I did catch myself. Uh, I was drinking more beer than normal or more alcohol. Um, did not know anybody in Colorado, so I think I went through uh, probably a depression, maybe without me knowing. Um, that's prior to meeting Libby. But um, I think for me, for me, I just try to give it my best. I'm not perfect, though. There's times where I let things have I let things catch up to me, meaning, you know, if I didn't if I put this to the side or postpone this project, postpone that it's going to catch up to me. So I know that now. Mm -hmm. 
So at that time, at the time, I was letting things catch up to me, and you know, also living by myself. Yeah, I went through a depression for a little bit. Also, like growing up when I was younger, I would get picked on too. You know, um, I had to learn how to fight. You know, protect yourself. And then I wasn't cute to certain girls I liked. I started liking girls young. I I kissed my I kissed the first girl uh, made out tongue kissed in third grade. <laughs> tongue kissed. And in the lot in the cult room, and I bit her on accident. So. This is so. This is when I was young. I, I don't know. I would get picked on by girls or whatever. Learn how to fight. Fight. My mom had me in like taekwondo, 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 mm-hmm. and uh, boxing for a little bit. And then um, finally, I started developing a little more. You know, going through puberty, and then you know, I started getting a little bit more attention from the girls that you know that I liked. Mm-hmm. But yeah, dealing with being bullied. Also, I was the only boy, so you know, you gotta um, in your family. Yeah. And I think it's good because I, I kind of grew up with girls, sisters, you know. At school, I was friends with a lot of the girls. And I would hear what girls didn't like in guys, what they liked. And these girls always liked older men. And it's like, man. They, but anyways, um, I think I dealt with, I was insecure for a long time. Um, I think I also, there's a part of me that doesn't give a fuck about what people think about me. But I still give a fuck, meaning... Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's more what my I give a fuck about what my family sees and thinks of me. So certain things I'll think like maybe I shouldn't do that because my family wouldn't if they you know right right. So but um but insecure, um not confident even though I seemed like I was confident I don't think I was at the time. And then as you start you know going through this journey called life, I think it kind of just you just get some bruises and you just kind of learn from it. Um. And I don't, I've, sometimes we've talked about this, but like you always talk about your mom being strong willed Uh, and and not showing emotion. So I don't know if it's. She shows emotion, but she was just so strong. And I don't. She is so strong. I, I would kind of argue with you in that I am very strong, but I cry a lot. And that's good. So it's a different. I think it's important to cry because you're kind of, when you don't, you're you're releasing that pain or that whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I tear, I'll cry. My mom, if she asked if she will, I think it's important for that because you're not bottling in something, you know. So I kind of see that in you, not that, but I was, I'm going back where if I'm having a rough time at something, you're always trying to be very positive to snap me out of it. And I noticed that my mom's, my dad's like that with my mom, my mom's like that with my, my mom's not hard to make, to satisfy. But I, I noticed that one thing between my parents that kept them this long is that my mom, my dad, my mom, my mom is the more rougher one, and my dad is so calm. And, and my dad pretty much, he helps my mom mentally, you know, like everything's going to be all right. You know, I think everybody needs, one hand washes another, right? So when one person's having a bad day, you know, you know it, it doesn't take much to make a person feel better. Like, no, everything's going to be all right. And even if that person's like, no, nah, you know, it doesn't take much Sometimes for you to. Sometimes hearing that helps. Yeah. So I think that's also has helped. Somebody asked a question about um, how do you and Libby uh, make your relationship work? And I was talking to Libby and I was like, well, I call Libby all the time. I call her. We talk on the phone. The only person I talk to on the phone. Yeah. We talk all the time on the phone. And my mama always tells me, oh, tell Libby I said hi and vice versa. But. I'll, I'll talk to her on break sometimes from work. Um, sometimes I'll talk to her. I'll call her while I'm using the bathroom, taking a dump, you know. Either and sending it, Facebook uh, videos or calling. You. Yeah. And, and so I think one thing is, is, is important as long as the two people have like this, both on the same page and communication and at least try, you know, put effort. You guys, man, that's a, that's a good, that's a, that's what a relationship is about is just to be, um, to, to, to at least try because one person can't try harder than the other one. But yeah, we talk a lot all the time on the phone, sometimes for two, three hours. And yeah. And people, most of the questions involve people wanting us to define or put a label on what we have. And I'm not comfortable with that. And the reason is because when we first met and we first uh, started whatever, it was all on the internet. 
It was being put on there. And yeah, it was bam, a, bam, it was, bam. It was an experience that I was like, this could go wrong. This could go It sideways. was a little, it was fun at the time, but it was a little too much for me because I, um, there's not many things that I keep personal, but something like this is something I am keeping more personal. And I think you're keeping it personal because you're also out of respect for trying to keep, like, um, uh, Give me a little privacy as far as like my yes. family and stuff. So for, she and also for my own privacy. Yeah. Um. So I am not going to put any specific and, labels. And I'm sure they understand, you know, because they all love you. I'm not going to put any specific labels, and people are dying. They want to know, and um, at this time, it's just not something I'm comfortable. Uh, I'm gonna check the cameras. Here. Okay, thank you. I can see yours on. It's not something I'm comfortable. Um, putting out in in the public. And then, uh, you know, we've had a, I've had, I've seen some bad comments. She's seen, she usually brings them to my attention. And there's some people out there that could be a little harsh or they don't know the full story and they just want to put their two cents. And sometimes the person receiving it, reading it, you know, it's like, it hurts them. So it's, she's brought up things to my attention. I'm like, why would somebody say that? Yeah. There's a lot of comments about, you know, Harry's intentions not being uh, good. And yeah, first of all, I'm a grown up. I'm a grown ass woman, and um, regardless of what our our status is, uh, we have fun together. Yeah, it's... we talk every day. We like creating stuff together. We like doing stuff together. We love music. We love food. Um, we love food. And um, if people are out here thinking that I am, and I will say this: if people are out there thinking that I am in some sort of sugar mama, sugar baby situation. No. That's absolutely not what it is. That's absolutely not what it is. Absolutely. And then, you know, some people will say, well, he's doing it for the clout. Okay, well, that's, if you're doing something for clout, you're doing a good job at at hanging with it. Because it's been (laughs) almost two years since we've been Yeah, and then I think, um, I think another reason of just like us, we get along so much is I, I, the comedy, like, I think we both look good together, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and and we're it's it's funny it's not funny but I'm saying there's chemistry but it's it the contrast is great it's and pe- it's it's like what are those because yeah. we get looks all the time when we're out no matter what we're and doing I think like, people should just take it for what it is and just enjoy it and for the ones that do really really love you of course they want what's best for you and if I was a piece of shit or had bad intentions I wouldn't have lasted this long meeting. <laughs> So, so with that being said, it's it's just you know I think we know what we're doing, right? It is what it is. Can and an applause. There you go. So that's the answer on that, and I did want to address that because I, I like I said, eighty percent of the comments is are are you guys effing? And I, and I, are and you I, guys together? I, and I will say, I told them like you can ask, but she's like, oh, people are gonna ask. Of course, they want to know the nitty and the greedy, the nitty gritty. Um. I if will you want to know, uh, I suggest you uh, subscribe to your <laughs> OF. <laughs> uh, but it's far, but for, for whatever we put out, take it for what it is. And um, yeah. And I will in the future. Um, Another reason, too, we didn't want to get, I didn't want to get to those questions too much, particulars, because, you know, I'm a, my mom might listen to your this. Your mom's going to be watching. I'm a grown ass man. I do what I want. <laughs> but, you know, I'm like, you know what? And then plus, you know, they would freak out you know it's it's like if you open that if you crack that door open a lot of people are going to want to ask a million more questions about something so yeah we're just uh, just know if it goes down it goes down and also for future future things um i think this is something that i will always keep sort of private yeah uh like what my relationship status is who i'm dating who i'm not dating I think that's something that I want to keep private for myself at this time. I don't know if it's going to change in the future, but I'm thinking no. Okay. Just because um, I don't want people to have that part of me. I'm just saying my relationship status and my sexual stuff, I don't want to, I don't think I want to share that with people because. Hey folks, not disclosing. (laughs) I just. And I don't know why that is. I th- I think it's because of this experience in the beginning. Not this experience. Yeah, kind of this experience because um, people are nosy, <laughs> which I get because I put it all out there. And but then at a point, it changed where I didn't want people to be nosy anymore, and they were still nosy about it. 
Yeah. Um, by the way, if anybody from the surrounding Chicago area that plans on going to their April 9th or 10th show in Chicago, I will be there as far as any other shows on tour. I'm going to try to make it to one, two, three, or as many as I can, depending with work. So somebody asked that if I was going to be in uh, one of the shows. Oh, he's got to go to Chicago. I have to go to Chicago. I know my sister's going. I know a couple of my friends are going. And um, I'm hoping that banger plays when you walk on stage. Oh, it will be. So, and plus, I'm looking to see my family and eat some good-ass food. You know, that's for sure. Favorite restaurant in Chicago? Uh Takalikalikos, what's it called? Well, it depends. My, my El Takalikalikos. No, my favorite, my favorite Mexican <laughs> restaurant in Chicago is called Atotonilcos. That's the one I was trying to say. Atoto <laughs> Nilcos, or this place called Indio. El Toto Nikos. Nilcos. But yeah, so if for whoever's going for the Chicago show, which you have one or two, it's one, right? <laughs> two, I think. I think. Um, I'll be at the shows. And don't come up to Harry. Asking if it get backstage because you ain't. Yeah. I Unless you have at least $50 to give him and then we're going to split it. It, it. And you know what, people? I'm a nice guy. So if you see me, I'll take pictures. I'll say hi. Like, hey, what's up? But I've had a few occasions where I'm like, oh, I'm on, let me call Libby. And then they want to get backstage. So if I tend to shoot a shot down or you shoot your shot and I shoot it down, <laughs> I'm sorry. It, Chelsea would cancel me real quick. <laughs> Because um, we're we're busy back there. Yeah, they're just they, they don't want no extra noise, right? That's like you're you're about to go on stage. We're back to go on stage. Yeah, yeah. like I said, if you're gonna try to do it, come with cash in hand. Don't be just coming or just up. Just purchase the tickets with the VIP. Well, rate. those are always sold out. Yeah, or just wait. But the afterwards. VIP is different from backstage. Backstage is backstage. That's where you get to see me and Chelsea just sitting there. Sit in there. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes with the titties out, sometimes not with the titties out. I mean, people think we're partying back there, and it's literally like this. Yeah, they just, mind you, they got to do one or two shows that night, pick up some food, go to the hotel, do your thing, wake up in the morning, hit the road do for the next Do it all city. over again. Drive to the, drive who knows how many hours to the next city, get there, do a mic check, then, you know, do whatever, whatever, do the same thing all over again. And... I'm sure you guys are tired. You guys can't hang out afterwards. We're, we're tired, um, but, you but, guys are, but I'm not complaining. We're not complaining. We love it. Yes, because I'm excited to go on tour. Yeah, I had a now, great. I've had a great time at uh, all your shows, mm -hmm. and um, I will say I was surprised with the meet and greets. I didn't when when I had found out that you guys had those that option. I didn't think the lines were going to be as long, <laughs> and those lines are long. Oaks. Well, at first, you didn't even really understand the humor. You were like, yes. I don't understand took, what's going on. It's because, you know, it took me, it's, the, what is it, trailer trash humor, they call it? Uh, like a kind of rednecky, maybe. Red, so More I, blue. So, I didn't get it because I didn't grow up, uh, but I have, you guess, ratchetness and probably, in just, or rednecks, I don't know, not rednecks, but ratchetness in, in our culture, too, you know? So, I can relate what's it. What's a redneck called in your culture? I don't even know what a redneck necessarily is. It's somebody that's like a, a mach, maybe machista. Like I, we have something about like they say that Mexican men are very like ego machista. Don't show effect, don't show feelings, affection. Kind of very tough, you know, pickup truck gun. Not a cowboy, but just kind of like a, uh, uh, don't show no 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 feelings. Um, I'm glad you're not like that. There's a lot of Mexican men that are like that, like where they expect their wife, they expect things a certain way without them having to explain it. I don't think it's so common anymore, but back then it was like you don't you don't ever question me. You know who's changing that? Bad Bunny. <laughs> he is. Shout out to Bad Bunny. Bad I love Bunny. shout outs, and I don't even know these people. <laughs> and Bad Bunny's not gonna watch this, so Bad Bunny baby. <laughs> Bad, Bad Bunny, Bad Bunny, but and for those that don't know, Bad Bunny is a. Uh, uh, Urban Latin pop artist. A reggaeton. Reggaeton. He's changing it in in showing that the the culture of Latin is that the right word? Latino men. Latino, yeah. Or um, Hispanic. Not Latino. having to subscribe to wearing certain outfits, or he can wear fingernail polish, or yeah. he can wear a dress, and it's okay, yeah. and it doesn't mean anything other than he's just expressing himself, and that's fine. Which people have done for a long. Prince did it. I mean, they are, but he's, I think he's specifically changing it for, for the Latin culture. Yes. Yeah. 
And then, um, and a lot of people are still like a lot of men I've noticed online are like, "Oh, what's he doing? That's weird. He's wearing a dress." And Is that goes he gay? back. That goes back to me. We, we, I was worried about what society would think. You know, it's it's it can mold our person. So, those are things that um, that I had dealt with. Speaking of storage, like things that I my anxiety, insecurity, confidence for for a teenager. But um, and it goes back to society. And people with bad intentions or men that are machista that are raise you to think a certain way or tell boys you boys don't cry, boys don't show or emotion. girls don't do this. So I think it goes back to all of that that kind of molds you. And and as an adult, you have to deal with those those flaws, I guess, or mental. Um, it's not a flaw. Not a flaw, but those uh, mental block, maybe. Yeah, and just know how to. You know what I so I'm gonna disclose something. Uh, did I use the right term? Mm-hmm. I was in a car accident about ten years ago. I hit the steering wheel, lost part of my lip, lost this tooth here. Now I was insecure for a long time, but I kind of turned it into a positive. I yeah, people would laugh, but I I still came up. I still met women. At times, I, and I was told, like, you know what, man, that tooth, missing tooth kind of gives you character. I'm like, what do you mean character? Like, yeah. And then plus, you kind of don't even notice it with your personality. And then plus with my big lips, whatever. <laughs> but that was one small lesson where I, I learned to, like, take a flaw or something. And I, it, it went, to, it got to the point that I totally forgot that I had a missing tooth. Then I... Libby seen my missing tooth, and then I got it fixed shortly after we met. Well, when when he was coming over, he called me. Can I tell him this? Uh, I don't. Go ahead. He called me and said, "Hey, just want to let you know. <laughs> it's so funny. I just want to let you know I got a car accident and I have a missing tooth." And I was like, "Okay." And um, I always loved the missing tooth. I thought it was. I told cute. her ahead of time because I didn't want to drive to go see you, and then that was the deal breaker. <laughs> So, and I know, I know, I'm like, damn. So, so I went and yeah, we're still here. So I got it fixed. I, I love, I loved it. And she loved it. I thought it's so cute. And every time I see a picture of it, I'm like, it's so cute. Like it get, it did give you character with the hair and the missing tooth. You just look like Mr. Bad. It's Mr. Badass. Mr. Mr. Yeah. yeah. You got it. You got it fixed right after. And, and you have a beautiful smile, Thank but you. before it was beautiful too. Yeah, but I, you I had, smile more now. Before yeah, you would just be like, because going back to be like, I was insecure. Shadi was insecure about um, about that. That's because people place a lot of value on people's teeth and smile. And then plus, it makes you not want to <clears throat> smile because it's like you, when you look at somebody in their face, the first thing you see is your eyes, your lips. You know this, so it it can make you feel. And then plus, people are not out here walking with missing. Teeth right so much well that I mean a lot of Americans have a lot of let me press the button the health care in our country is and dentistry is so so expensive and people dog other people that have bad teeth or no teeth or but it's like all this stuff is so expensive and people are living in yeah in poverty how are they supposed to get a, a smile so people need to stop dogging people that don't have teeth. I remember when we put out that first video where we were testing donuts. There were some people that said something about, oh, he's missing a tooth. Yeah, so what? And, and that's another thing. I was laughing. Like, I was really laughing. That was actually <laughs> the great a great video because I didn't expect the humor. I was not, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. And <laughs> I had a great time. But then I knew, I remembered about my tooth missing. So I got self-conscious. But it's okay, you know. I thought this was going to make me self-conscious, but I'm like, man, you a boss-ass bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no. um, so, yeah, it goes back to, I think, you, you know, the person's outlook on things. Yeah, yeah. Should we put a picture of you up with your tooth gone? Oh, I thought they are going to show a picture of me as a kid. But they oh, were, they yeah, were, they I were, saved this picture to show. We're almost going on two hours. All right, we're going to have to. We might have to uh, do an epi- another episode <laughs> another time here, folks. Hey, folks, looks like we're doing another episode. Yeah, I wanted to share this picture of Harry because he sent this to me a while back. Did you, is it on your cloud? It should be. And if not, you could just upload it later. And it Well, will I'm going right to put it over the video, but yeah. for just for us to look at it so we can reflect on. I wish there was a 
bathroom in here. You got to go pee pee? I've been for the last half an hour. Really? Doing the. Uh, Surprisingly, I haven't had to. All right. First of all, <laughs> this little cutie guy right here. Oh, Lord. Look at that little baby angel wearing a, a suit. A clip on tight. <laughs> Mind you, I would. I. I. Uh, I got myself dressed, did my own hair. <laughs> How old were you here? Who knows? Probably like. Was it kindergarten or first grade? It was one of those. And the uh, <laughs> the the photographer, he said that I looked one hundred percent sharp. So every year, every every time we did picture day, I always wanted to wear the same suit. My mom didn't want to pay for pictures <laughs> for me wearing the same clothes. But look at him! Look how happy he. I probably woke up at like four in the morning that day. <laughs> You got that hair slick. Did you fix your own hair? I probably did. I would wear a hairnet at night sometimes. <laughs> yes, I was bad. I would be in my with my with my gel, my Aquanet hairspray, my blow dryer, <laughs> blow drying in the bathroom. I'd be in there for a long time. I um, I'm dead. That's the cutest little picture I've ever seen. That's adorable. And then I have one in eighth grade. Remember that one? All right. Then can you explain this one? Okay, I thought I was a cool ass. I don't know. I, I think I was maybe 18 at the time. Was that a webcam picture? Yeah, that was a laptop computer picture. And so when you placed your hand on your chin like this, what did you I think? I don't that, know. What did you think you were putting across? I thought it was made me look more cool. <laughs> Why? Can you can you recreate this picture real quick for us? Oh, I'm dead. It's the wife beater for me. I am dead. That's all I want to show. Um, This little baby angel, though. Yeah, that was great. I always had big lips. My lips were always chapped as a kid. Um, <laughs> some girl once, she's like, you you're, you have beautiful lips, but they're always just chapped. <laughs> and then for, for like my birthday one year, I think she gave me some chapstick or something. You want some? I got some. No, right I'm here. good. I'm good. I need a bathroom though. Okay, we're gonna no. we're gonna shut her down. Um, it's getting close. I'm just trying to think if there's anything I want to <clears throat> say. Um, excuse me. About um, anything that I was just throw out there. Um, other than that, I'm happy. I'm living. Love you, mom. Love you, dad. Love you, sisters. I was gonna say their <laughs> names. Sisters. And my nephews love you, love you, Libby. Love you, honey. Thank you for being a great friend. Um, looking forward to going to a couple of your shows, and um, yeah, hopefully, if people request me on the air again, I'll be back. And I'm sure this won't be the last time here. Next if not, show. you're canceled. And let us know if you like the song. And with that, we will say goodbye. Thanks for joining us on Storage, and peace. Peace.